Britain has got a big, fat secret. Each year, we are getting fatter. I've actually put on a stone in the last year. You've got a bit of a bit beer belly going. Four months. Yeah. Getting bigger and bigger. Yet many of us say we don't know why. I don't do anything any different, but it's there. I don't think I am eating more. Well. Go through phases where I eat lots and lots of food. I'm slowing down on metabolism, I think. We've got a theory about why people are putting on weight. We're secret eaters. We each make around 200 eating decisions a day. But studies show that most of these are made without even thinking. No wonder we have no idea just how much we're eating. To put our theory to the test, we've come up with an extreme experiment. We're exposing the hidden eating habits of the nation one household at a time. Putting all those sneaky mouthfuls under 24-hour surveillance and presenting the forensic evidence in our incident room before they embark on a 10-week healthy eating plan. Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh blimey, what's going on here? <laughs> Plus, we're revealing the inside scientific secrets behind why we all overeat. They ate 300% more. And the changes that could make all the difference. I think it may help to change my, my whole lifestyle. Behind this secret wall, we're about to blow the lid off our nation's eating habits once and for all. Well, that was great. Me and Agent Snout here did quite well. Um, I saw her eating a cake. I'm a journalist, author and presenter, but most importantly, I'm a veteran dieter. I have literally tried every diet going in order to shift the pounds. But the one thing I do know, that if you want to be truly successful at losing weight, first things first, you've got to be honest about what you're eating. But not everyone is aware of what they eat. So we're helping overweight households solve that problem by putting them under round-the-clock surveillance to reveal to them the reason why they can't shift the pounds. Research suggests that being aware of exactly what you eat is the key to changing your behaviour. Can these families use the truth to kickstart a new, healthier lifestyle? Today's family who've asked for our help are the Meekins from the Midlands. I'm Susan Meakin, I'm 48. I've always been overweight, really, since I had the children. Sue's puzzled about why she's the weight she is. I don't necessarily think my size reflects what I eat, cos I sometimes think I don't eat enough. She believes that she has a healthy, balanced diet. I do buy a lot of fruit and veg. If we cook, you know, it'd be something like spaghetti bolognese or, like, gammon. Sue's son, Dave, lives at home with them. Dave Meakin, uh, 26 years old. I'm a chef in Sutton Carfield. Despite being a chef who spends all day working with food, Dave claims he eats very little and his weight is a bit of a mystery to him. When I'm working, I don't really eat that much because I'm, I'm, um, I'm working with food all day, so the idea of sitting down and actually eating doesn't appeal to me because I'm working with the food. I don't nibble when I'm working. Sue's daughter lives close by with her boyfriend, Andrew. Uh, I'm Natalie, I'm 30 years old, and I work in forensics for the police. I don't understand why I'm this big, because I don't eat that much. But I suppose it, you don't really realise how much you're actually eating or what is really in the food that I'm eating. Natalie has made several previous attempts to lose weight. I begged Andrew, saying that if I got a dog, he'd get me nice and fit and healthy, because, you know, I have to walk him all the time. And in the end, I've just made the dog fat. He's now classed as a giant dog at the vets, and he needs to lose three stone. I think the weight issue in the household is a uh, taboo subject. But a recent family crisis has made the Meekins weight an urgent issue. My husband, Joe, had a heart attack, which was a real shock, because out of all the family, he's actually what we always thought was the healthiest. Under advice from the doctor, Dad, Joe, managed to shed two stone, and now he's desperate for his family to follow suit before it's too late. The three of them do need a shock. They do need a wake-up call. And it sounds nasty, but it's only for their benefit. The sooner the better. Please lose some of the weight. 
Help is at hand, Joe. I'm on my way to meet Sue, Natalie and Dave to help them discover why the weight's not coming off. I think that this is the right thing for us because we're doing it as a family, so we will all get healthy together. Hello. You're around, family. <laughs> the weevils. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you are weevils. <laughs> You're carrying a few extra pies there. So, Sue, how heavy are you at the moment? 17 and a half stone. So what would you like to get down to? Realistically, I'd like to get down to about 12 and a half. What are you putting in your trolley every week when you go shopping? Fruit and veg. So, so hang on a minute, you're putting fruit and veg in your shopping trolley. Are you then eating your fruit and veg when you get home? And sometimes, sensibly? sometimes eat it. I may eat more than I acknowledge I eat, but I don't think I do. You, I don't think I eat enough. You, you don't think you eat enough? I don't think I eat enough so to keep me engine ticking over. You're <laughs> 17 and a half stone. You don't know, think you eat enough. I'm going to come to you, Dave. How much do you weigh? Uh, I think about 18 stone. You're 18 stone. You're only half a stone off your mum. OK, so, and do you want to be thinner? Yeah, yes. So, Natalie, let's talk a little bit about your eating habits then. So, do you know what you're eating? I kind of think, oh, maybe my diet's not that bad because I don't have fizzy drinks, I don't have salt. So, it, from one sense, I kind of think, oh, actually, I could be quite healthy, really, because I'll occasionally have a bit of fruit and I don't put salt on anything. I wouldn't say I had sugar. I wouldn't say my diet's high in sugar. Oh, really? Because I don't eat sweets or drink pop. From what the Meekins tell me, their diets are quite healthy, and yet they're overweight. Are they consuming more calories than they're aware of? We're going to get to the truth of exactly what really is going on in this household, and uh, we're going to be watching you 24-7. You want that? Are you committed to us actually digging around and getting to the truth? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fine. Do you want to change? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK, well, we will find out what is really going on with you three. The Meekins have agreed to stick to their usual eating habits while being under round-the-clock surveillance. We've set up cameras in the living room, kitchen and even on their fridge. Natalie's house, which she shares with boyfriend Andrew, has also been rigged with cameras. For five days, they've agreed to stick to their normal diet and we'll be recording evidence of any naughty nibbling or mindless munching to build a picture of what they're really eating. But what they don't know is that secretly tailing them are Duncan Mee and Cameron Gowlett. They're two of the best private investigators in the business. They'll be using their expertise in surveillance to make sure the Meekins have nowhere to hide. So that we can discover where the family are going wrong with their diet. I'm really hoping that once we face them with the evidence and we quantify what they are truly scoffing, that this might actually really help them to change and to become the people they really want to be. As I leave, the PIs begin their stakeout. It's the first night of surveillance. Get with it, I need food. I need food. And while the Meekins settle down to a night on the sofa, the PIs are stationed in the van outside monitoring the CCTV cameras. I reckon that's a menu. Yeah. Is it a Chinese? That is a Chinese menu. <laughs> yep, definitely a Chinese menu. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes the takeaway. Food is coming. One in four of us has a takeaway at least once a week, and Chinese is the nation's favourite. So it's in a box. Oh, blimey, we've got a box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But a Chinese takeaway like the Meekins has a reputation for being the least satisfying, and Dr. Richard Marshall at the Secret Eaters Lab can tell us why. It's a huge, great plateful, but there's lots of carbohydrate, there's lots of fat, which just fill you up for a short time. The fat will actually cause the contents of the stomach to em empty more quickly, and so you feel hungry again sooner. Whereas if you eat a, a high-protein meal, then you feel satisfied and you don't feel that you're going to have to raid the larder in just a, a few moments' time. So if you want a protein-rich Chinese meal that fills you up, choose meat, tofu or egg dishes and steer clear of excess carbs like chips or batter. 
The Meekin's Chinese takeaway is the first piece of evidence we've gathered. For the next five days, we'll be monitoring them to find out if they're falling into any other eating traps. It's been predicted that by 2030, nearly half of us will be obese. So we're hoping to reverse that trend one household at a time by getting to the bottom of why they're getting fatter. Two. I need two. Thank you, Daddy. Today's family are the Meekins from the Midlands. They've got no idea why they can't lose weight. So, in a revolutionary new experiment, we've got them under 24-hour surveillance for five days. We're filming them round the clock inside the home and tracking them outside with two top private investigators. Will the secret filming reveal what's making them put on weight? In a bid to keep herself and Monty the dog fit, Natalie regularly takes him out for walks. So P.I. Cameron has a new recruit, Agent Snout, to help his cover as he follows her in the park. Her boyfriend, Andrew, is in on the secret. I've just sent a text to Andrew and asked him where they're heading. So hopefully he'll give us a bit of a heads up. Here we are, put it away. The insider tip leads to some evidence. Well, that was great. Me and Agent Snout here did quite well. Um, I saw her eating a cake, which I believe is a chocolate and banana cake. In five days, the PIs have travelled over 150 miles, taken hundreds of photos and enlisted the help of friends, colleagues and the public. You know, the, the woman that ordered something before, I want the same. OK, sir. Now their snacks, treats and nibbles have been gathered in the evidence room, ready to show the Meekins. It's time to bring our unsuspecting family here into our secret evidence room. We told them, if we're going to help you, we need to know everything. And boy, did we mean it. The Meekins have no idea that behind our false wall, they'll be coming face to face with what they really eat. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for coming down. Now, obviously, you know that you're a part of a show where you have asked us to help you to lose weight, and that is why you're here. You agreed to let us rig up your house with cameras. Do you want to have a look at what we found? Take a look at this. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, my God! <laughs> Come on through and take a look. Oh, <laughs> Come with Natalie. me. Oh, Natalie! God, that is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse, Natalie. Feast your eyes, as it were. OK. Come on in, <laughs> come on in, come on in. That's your table. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell already. Oh. Tell. So what you don't know is as well as rigging up your house with cameras, we also had private investigators on to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is the evidence that we have managed to gather all of the photos. <laughs> We've managed to track exactly where you're going oh, to secretly no score. Way. First to face the evidence is 17 stone six, Natalie. In the last 15 years, she's gone from a size 10 to a 22. I hate the idea that I think people look at me and think, oh, look how she's let herself go, look at the state of her. They eat for comfort. Everything I turn to is food. For everything, whether I'm happy, sad, anything, I turn to food. And it's just a nasty, vicious cycle, really. Before filming began, we asked the family to fill in food diaries for five days. Natalie's food diary shows that she eats three square meals a day and snacks regularly on chocolate and crisps. Is this an accurate picture of her complete eating habits? Let's see what our surveillance unearthed. Right, we need to move position. Our PI Cameron followed Natalie to work, where a colleague filled him in on what she'd eaten that morning. She brought in a big tub of biscuits for everyone, which she had three of when she first got in. Ah, oh, right, um, OK. And oh, then she yeah. had a bag of crisps. Yeah. And then she had a, a, a bowl of Chinese leftovers that she brought in. 
Right, OK, so she's had three biscuits, a packet of crisps and a bowl of Chinese. Okay, Cheers, bye-bye. Okay. Right, that's her, that's her, that's her. When Natalie leaves work, Cameron is hot on her heels and she heads straight for a drive through Oh, no, 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 no! No! He's got in front of us. Damn. Now it's up to Cameron to deduce what Natalie ordered, but will the confused staff get it right? Yeah, I want the same thing as the woman, uh, not in the car in front, the one before. Sorry? Uh, you know the, the woman that ordered something, not the last order, but the one before, I want the same. Uh, right, uh, let's see if I can figure that one out, which one it is. Yeah, uh, oh, exactly the same as her, that's what I want. OK, sir. Make... Yeah, oh, even better. Mission accomplished. Oh. Now Cameron can see exactly what Nat is about to eat on top of her morning biscuits, a packet of crisps and a bowl of leftover Chinese with fried rice, chicken curry and king prawns. So... What we've got here is, um, is a large Coke. We've got large fries. We've got a large chicken sandwich, two double cheeseburgers, uh, onion rings, and, and these are all the sauces to go with that. So this is exactly the same as what she ordered. This whole meal comes in at a massive 2,520 calories. <whistles> Natalie's home alone with just a takeaway for company. After finishing her fast food meal, she tries to hide the evidence from boyfriend Andrew. But Cameron has her rumbled. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. gasps> oh, they're so sly, I can't believe that. When you nip to McDonald's and had that double chicken burger and the onion rings and all those sauces. We've got the sauces here. And in just these two bags, Natalie, there's 280 calories. No. Just in sauces alone. So forget the meal you're scoffing, just in sauces alone. I have that all the time. 300 calories just in that. Is it fair to say that you quite like to uh, enjoy yourself and treat yourself at the weekends as well? <laughs> so let's just have no. a look at this. <laughs> It's better not be Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not watch this. <laughs> oh, God. Like 92% of dieters, Saturday is Natalie's day off watching what she eats. <laughs> it's 10am, and the first bit of evidence is in, courtesy of Natalie's boyfriend, Andrew. Oh, excellent. Two sausages wrapped in bacon and filled with cheese. Later in the day, we catch her clocking up two whisper bars and a coffee. And then she's off out for another cup of coffee and a slice of chocolate and banana cake. It's 4.30 and our PI has tracked Natalie down to a fried chicken joint, where she's got a takeaway for herself and Andrew. Right, I've got exactly the same order. Natalie's half of the takeaway consisted of a large portion of fries, beans, fried mini breast fillets, a chicken burger with a hash brown and lots of sachets of sauces. Up to this point, Natalie has consumed around three and a half thousand calories. That's already one and a half times a woman's recommended daily allowance. An evening of alcohol follows, adding another 1,600 calories. And Natalie ends her night with a fried chicken wrap and chips covered in sauce and a large bar of chocolate for dessert. But we've worked out that on Saturday alone, this Saturday just gone, you ate... I can't believe this. <laughs> do, do, you want to, do you want to guess how many calories? 4,000. Nearly 7,000 calories. Just on one Saturday? day, which is enough for over three women wow. in one day. It's quite scary realising how much I've had, that I've had three women's worth of calories in one day. Oh, I've got no idea how much I was eating. I don't think I really realised just how much I was sort of packing away, really. Um, but seeing that on film and seeing myself on film, oh, it's horrendous. Any thoughts so far? Just looking at myself on there, thinking. Yeah? It's not nice, because when you... It's awful! 
I, I just think I look quite unhappy as well, and I wanted that. I wanted to see myself, but I didn't think I looked that bad. I just look at us all there and think we're as bad as each other, aren't we? Don't get upset. I just find it really hard. Today's the start of a new... Don't worry, I'm not going to do it. A new diet. I don't want to look like that. I know how upsetting it can be and how frightening it can be. But I promise you, all of you, you've got expert help here. We want to help you. We want you to be the people you want to be. It just upset me seeing myself like that on film. It's almost like I didn't recognise the person I was watching. I didn't realise that's how I look. So um, I'm definitely ready. Bring on the apples. <laughs> Natalie is a classic emotional eater. She uses food to enhance positive emotions, such as celebrating the start of the weekend, and to combat negative feelings like stress, loneliness, and boredom. If you're an emotional eater, remember cravings only last about 20 minutes. So distract yourself until the urge to eat passes. Also, identify your triggers. Whether it's a hard day at the office or your football team's just lost a match, make a conscious effort to avoid comfort food completely. Try going for a walk or keeping your hands and mouth busy by phoning a friend for a chat. Natalie's food diary said she was averaging an intake of 3,230 calories a day, but her filmed daily average was over 4,500. Now faced with her secret eating, will she finally be able to change her habits? Natalie will start a 10-week healthy eating plan. She'll be aiming to bring her calories down to 1,800 a day, binning the takeaways and curbing her weekend blowouts. Across this series, we've been giving you some handy hints on how we can all eat less, if we make some small changes to our behaviour. And this week, we're off to the supermarket. Now, I have to confess, most of the time when I'm in a supermarket, I'm in full control. But then, I'll confess, there are certain times when I just seem to have a meltdown, where I suddenly find myself reaching for the bad boys. High fat, high sugar, high salt snacks that I have just got to have. And the thing is, I don't really know why I do it. Chartered psychologist Dr David Lewis thinks he might have some answers. Why are we here today, then? What, what are you going to say to well, me? Well, we're going to be looking at how people shop in a supermarket, and what I'm interested in is the kind of food choices we make and how these food choices can actually lead to us overeating. Right, OK. And the, the key thing here is whether you're shopping when you're hungry. I've heard that this before, that if yeah. you go shopping when you're hungry, you buy more, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But I kind of thought it was a bit of a myth. Not at all. It's scientifically proven. Absolutely. And what's more, you'll actually go when you're shopping when you're hungry, you'll go for things which are high in fat and high in sugar, because they'll give you that quick energy buzz, you know, yeah. that, that hit. Well, it all sounds absolutely plausible in theory, and I can attest to being hungry and, you know, buying bad foods, but we need to test it. We do. This is going to be an interesting one, yes. I think. We'll have to see what happens. So that's the theory. Now we're going to put it to the test. We've asked 16 volunteers to take part in an experiment. They've been split into two groups of eight. For the morning, we're keeping each group in separate rooms. They think they're here to take part in an experiment which tests their behaviour whilst performing a series of tasks. But they're not. Group one has access to healthy snacks to munch on throughout the morning to keep them going. But the second group hasn't. All they've got is water. And after three hours without food, they should be feeling pretty hungry. And this is where the real experiment begins. We've given each of our volunteers a tenner. And now they're about to be let loose in the supermarket to buy their lunches. Dr David will be recording exactly what's going into each of our volunteers' baskets. He'll then be able to calculate how many calories and how much fat each of our two groups has gone for. Oh, some, some donuts and some toffees. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, all I need is sugar. I'm not, like, really hungry, but I just want, like, my energy level. Why do you need sugar? Have you not eaten anything today? No. So you're hungry? Yes. If Dr David's theory is correct, then our hungrier group should put more food with more calories and more fat into their baskets. 
Later, we'll be back to find out how our groups got on. Over the past five days, the Meakin family from the Midlands has been under 24-hour surveillance because they wanted our help to understand why they're so big. We've gathered evidence of their mindless munching and brought them to the Secret Eaters incident room to show them what we found. <laughs> oh, God! Natalie was the first to face the music. Next up will be Mum Sue. Since having her children with husband Joe, 17 Stone 5 Sue has been fighting the Battle of the Bulge and losing. I've been married to the same man for 30 years. He loves me no matter what shape, size or weight I am. So I think that's part of the problem, really, because I know he loves me no matter what. So you do let yourself go. According to Sue's food diary, she has a healthy diet, including pieces of fresh fruit. During the period before filming, she recorded eating, on average, a slimming 1,900 calories a day. Is she a medical mystery, or did our cameras catch some secret eating? Sue. You said to me last week that you didn't think that you were eating that much to justify why you're 17 stone. So let's just have a look at uh, your first issue. The house cameras showed that Sue cooked several nutritious meals for herself and husband Joe. Her three meals a day added up to between 1,500 to 1,800 calories, well within the recommended daily allowance for a woman. So just where are those secret calories coming from? Over the course of the surveillance, our cameras picked up Sue drinking several cups of coffee. But just look at what she has with them. In five days, Sue ate a number of chocolate bars and biscuits whilst having a cuppa. Our dietitian worked out that this adds up to just under 200 extra calories a day. Sue's not alone. 89% of 45 to 54-year-olds admit to having a biscuit or chocolate bar with their cuppa. So what is it about chocolatey treats that makes us love them so much? Food scientist Richard Marshall in the Secret Eaters lab has the answer, and it all happens in the mouth. All chocolate melts at just a little bit below blood temperature. Which is, you know, our body temperature is 37 degrees, uh, and this is melting at about 34, 35 degrees. So it requires heat from us, from our mouth, to melt. And that gives a cooling sensation, very slight, which we like. We like that feel of it. And then it gives a coating around the mouth, which again is nice and pleasurable, a sort of lubricating effect. New studies suggest a brisk 15-minute walk can suppress chocolate cravings and reduce your intake by half. But if you can't kick the habit, opt for lower calorie treats like Milky Way or a fudge bar. No, you're not having chocolate. You don't need it. Get fruit. I'm the coffee. Ever since suffering a heart attack, Sue's husband Joe has eaten more healthily. Worried for Sue's health, he now tries to stop her from eating too many sugary snacks. I'll have a coffee. Don't be following me in here. Don't be following me. Do you want a whisper? Do you want half? Put it back. To share it. Come on. Put it back. You don't have to stand watching me. I'm watching you. And when she can't get her own way with a chocolate bar, she downgrades to a biscuit. I know it's funny, but can you see what you're doing? Yeah, I know it's sugar, but... I kid myself that that's the only sugar I have in a day, then, you see. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Sue is a classic tea-time treater, reaching for a sweet snack with a cuppa. If you're one of these types, you should eat regularly to stop your blood sugar levels from dropping too low and triggering that urge for chocolate or biscuits. And try breaking the association by changing your choice of cuppa to something like a herbal tea. Having seen what you've seen today, what are you discovering about yourself, do you think? 
Maybe I shouldn't eat chocolate. Your big issue, Sue, it's your secret snacking. And you know it's bad, otherwise you wouldn't be whispering and trying to hide it from Joe. So we will tackle that and show you really that if you do need to snack, then there are healthier options that you can go for. I think you kid yourself a bit about what you eat and don't eat. And I'm obviously eating more than I think. Over the next 10 weeks, Sue will be on a diet plan aiming for 1,900 calories a day. Our dietitian has worked out if Sue could just kick her tea time treat habit, she could lose up to one and a half stone in 12 months. Earlier on, we set up an experiment to find out if shopping when you're hungry makes you put more unhealthy, fatty foods and therefore more calories into your basket. We split our volunteers into two groups and kept them busy for a morning. One group grazed on snacks and the other went hungry. Then at lunchtime, they were all given £10 each and let loose in the supermarket to buy whatever they wanted. David has been monitoring both the teams. So, the shoppers who've been fed healthy snacks throughout the morning who aren't particularly hungry, but also the ravenous, starved ones that we've denied any food whatsoever who are now very tired and irritable. Will they pick more food and also the high calorie foods that David has predicted? It's time to find out. David, yes. the results are in. They are. Please tell me they are <laughs> astounding and they've worked. <laughs> Well, the math has all been done, and the results I think you'll find quite amazing. I was amazed myself. Those who shopped while they were hungry, because we hadn't given them anything to eat all day, they ate 300% more. They That's chose 300% more in terms of calories and 400% more in terms of the amount of fat they consumed. That massively, massively proves the theory, uh, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. They were really going for high-fat items which would give them that burst of energy. They ate... Uh, uh, two and a half, just over two and a half thousand calories each per person, which is, you know, for a man, that's all he should eat in the course of the day. Just for lunch? Yes, just for lunch. But the interesting thing was, Anna, that they had the health, those who had the, some snacks during the day to sort of keep them going, they only ate 370 calories. It was, they were healthy snacks. Yet when they came into the supermarket, it made that vast difference. It made they, meant they ate 700 calories rather than 2,500 calories. So, again, if you are a little bit worried about your weight, yeah. a good tip is whether you are shopping in the supermarket, whether you are ordering a takeaway, yeah. whether you're in a restaurant or just cooking at home, yeah. make sure you've had some snacks beforehand, healthy snacks, and you will significantly reduce your calories. Absolutely. Hello, shoppers! <laughs> OK, I have got a confession to make. You lot think that you were brought down here to take part in a behavioural study. <laughs> that was a bit of a porky lie. You are taking part in a behavioural study, but actually what we're looking at is how you behave when you go into a supermarket when you're hungry. OK. Three times as much. That is, that makes me feel a bit ill. <laughs> Three times. Wow. Amazing. And um, scary. Yeah, don't, don't ever go shopping when you're hungry. That's scary, though. Never. Right. I didn't think yeah, I was being think... that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise, but yeah. It's... I think it may help to change my my whole lifestyle, and I'm I'm really grateful for that. It's been a great day. <laughs> Oh, David, yep. you've been very quiet throughout all of this. We come to you, finally. Uh. 17 Stone 4 Chef Dave has no idea why he's overweight, but he has good reason to worry about it. Dad had a heart attack. Uh, that was probably due to too much uh, greasy, fatty foods and too much beer, which, December 26, I'm going down the same road as that. Look in the mirror, generally, I feel repulsed. Go down on myself. It's one of those days. Dave's food diary showed a calorie intake of around 1,700 a day. But just to maintain his current weight, he would have to be eating nearly double that amount. So, over the past five days, we've put Dave under close surveillance in an attempt to get to the bottom of why he is 17 stone, four pounds. Our house cameras revealed that on a typical work day, Hello. Dave gets home at 8pm. You're having something to eat now? 
So that one might do. And his evening meal consists of not much more than a burger, a chocolate bar, and an ice cream. Not the most nutritious meal, but neither the most calorific. On an average evening, Dave is consuming between 1,000 and 1,200 calories from his evening meal. So why is he piling on the pounds? Are you eating at all during the day? Uh, sometimes I might grab a quick sandwich. Quick it depends sandwich. If I'm working, there will be a quick sandwich. Let's just have a look at what kind of sandwich we're talking about here, Dave. After it became apparent that Dave wasn't putting away the calories at home, our PI Duncan was given the task of finding out what was going wrong. We managed to track down one of Dave's work colleagues at the pub. And just before Dave tucked into a quick bite at work, Duncan's mole snapped his snack and texted the picture to us. <laughs> there Is you that? Go. That's a sandwich? That's a flatbread, yeah, that's a sandwich. <laughs> it's on a big TV, it looks bigger. <laughs> In that sandwich alone, a thousand calories. Dave. How have you figured that one out? Because we've got an expert <laughs> no, on that. Our expert dietitian, Lynn Garten, has analysed a sandwich identical to Dave's. So here we've got roughly about 200 grams of fried chicken, and that 200 grams equates to about nearly 500 calories. It's about 50 grams of cheese. But that 50 grams of cheese is another 200 calories. When we talk about a portion of cheese, it should be about the size of a matchbox. In here, we've got the equivalent of two portions. There's a token gesture with the vegetables here. Fantastic that they're here, but there certainly isn't enough of them. So those vegetables may be about 20 calories in there. Flatbread is about 300 calories. Got a couple of tablespoons of barbecue sauce on. We've got a dish which is coming up to be over a thousand calories. If you were just to have half the amount of chicken, half the amount of cheese, lots more vegetables to make it the same volume and have, say, a pita bread rather than a, a large flat bread, you'd automatically be cutting the calories down. If he saves himself 500 calories a day over the course of a year, he'd lose nearly four stone in weight. We've identified one source of hidden calories. But there's an even bigger secret villain. Booze. All right, let's look at, at how much booze you're having. Over the course of five days, the house cameras filmed Dave consuming 17 beers. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> P.I. Duncan managed to get his hands on the family's rubbish bag containing the evidence. First thing that hits me is uh, a lot of beers. Tons and tons of beers. Endless amounts of beer. And he persuaded Dave's best mate at work to rat on him. So, on a big night out, how many pints would you reckon that um, Dave would drink? If he called for it, he yeah. can do 15. Can he really? Yeah. 15. 15 pints. That is not a joke. So on an average day, how many pints do you reckon you're, you're sinking? Average day, four or five. Four or five pints? Yeah. Your mate there said that on a Saturday night, you could easily pack away 15. 15 pints long. So on Saturday night alone, that's 3,000 calories on top of the food that you're consuming, which is why you're carrying extra weight. With seven calories per gram, alcohol has nearly the same calorie content as pure fat. If Dave downs 15 pints on a Saturday night, that's almost as many calories as eating four roast beef dinners with roast potatoes and a Yorkshire pudding. Your issues are you need to keep an eye on your booze. Yeah. All right, we all love a drink, OK, but, you know, keep there's a lot. You that. Yeah, your mum's... Listen to your mum. She's no angel, Do but... Yeah, listen, listen to yeah. your mum. Yeah. <laughs> Dave is a classic calorie swigger. These types are prone to packing away excess hidden calories contained in their favourite tipple. Often they'll have no idea how many drinks they're having and how much damage they're doing to their waistline once they start guzzling. If you're serious about losing weight, try lagers with a lower alcohol content. Per pint, Pilsner and Skoll contain around 70 calories less than stronger lagers like Stella or Carlsberg Export. Dave thought he was consuming an average of 1,700 calories a day, but our surveillance shows that he was actually getting through over 2,400. 
seeing the food in front of you, knowing that you ate that food in one day, that was quite shocking to see the amount of food. His new diet plan will see him sticking to 2,000 calories, which means cutting back on his huge sandwiches and drinking less beer. If he can make these small changes, we'll hopefully see a slimmer and happier Dave in 10 weeks' time. Yeah, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, I'll be able to do it. Ten weeks ago, Sue Meakin and her children Natalie and Dave, who live in the Midlands, couldn't understand why their waistlines were big and steadily getting bigger. I don't necessarily think my size reflects what I eat, cos I sometimes think I don't eat enough. The Meekins agreed to allow surveillance cameras into their home, but they had no idea that two top PIs were tracking them every time they left the house. Well, that was great. Me and Agent Snout here did quite well. Um, I saw her eating a cake, which I believe is a chocolate and banana cake. After five days of evidence gathering, we confronted them with their secret eating habits. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> we revealed that Nat's weekend binges were causing her to pile on the pounds. On Saturday alone, you ate enough for over three women. Wow. And that Sue was a secret tea time treater, guzzling chocolate bars in a downtime. What are you discovering about yourself, do you think? Maybe I shouldn't eat chocolate. I kid myself that that's the only sugar I have in a the day, then, you see. Well, it's not. For Dave, the problem was his thousand calorie sandwiches. That's a sandwich? That's a flatbread, yeah, that's a sandwich. <laughs> it's on a big TV, it looks bigger. <laughs> For 10 weeks, the Meekin family has stuck to a healthy eating plan. I have changed my ways a lot. I'm not eating things on the sly that I would have done in the past. And I do feel better for it. There's more salad and there's less alcohol. It's changed completely, my lifestyle has. And I'm loving what I'm eating. You know, I'm trying sort of all sorts of new foods, and I love that. Now we're going to find out if our unique intervention has worked. Oh, you know. <laughs> it's still there, just a bit smaller. <laughs> nice to see you. And you? Nice to see you again. Genuinely look really, really well. And I'm so pleased to be able to say that, especially for you. I've had a few of the relatives at work say, are you on a diet? You look slimmer. Have you lost weight? I can see that. And how about you, Dave? Yeah, I've had a couple of people at work say that they've noticed a little bit. Not quite as round around the edges. Yeah. <laughs> It's you coming up slowly. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> you're getting that. And how about you? Yeah, a few people have said that they think my shape has changed a bit. So that's good. It's, it's going in the right direction. It's definitely changed. I mean, I think your tum's gone right down. I think I've kind of accepted now that the best way for me to lose weight and keep it off is pound a week. I can still go out and have some drinks if I want. I can still have treats. You've got to be happy. It's got to be realistic. Exactly. So I'd like to lose. What, about four stone in 12 months? Are you going to be... I'll uh... see you my bikini, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have all lost weight, which is great. OK, do you want to know how much? Go on, then. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Natalie. Yeah. You have lost the most. No way! <laughs> You've lost nearly a stone. You've lost 12 pounds. No Sweet. way! Wonderful! Yay! Well done! Thank you. <laughs> that is fantastic. No, really? Yeah. Oh, now, don't and you I... feel good now? I do, actually. <laughs> there you go. It's all worth it. <laughs> it's a happy Nat. If Nat keeps up the good work, she'll be on target to lose around four stone, six pounds in a year. David? Yes. You have lost... ten pounds. Good on yeah. 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 Well done. Well done. Yeah. You're well on your way. And by sticking to his new way of life, Dave is on target to lose three stone, ten pounds in a year. Susan. Here we go. You've lost 11 pounds. Whoa, there we go, then. <laughs> Not bad. So we're pretty much the same, then. And if Sue keeps up this rate of weight loss, she could lose a stone every three months. Which means you are all exactly the same weight. You're 16 stone eight each. Well, there we you get. are. <laughs> you show the scales in champ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm personally really pleased that you've done it and you've each lost nearly a stone. It's great. Through our intervention, the Meekin family has reined in their secret eating habits and are now finally on course to change their lives for good. 
It's really surprising just how making those small little changes can completely change your life. I'm much more open now because what's the point in lying at the end of the day I'm only kidding myself if I'm secretly eating McDonald's and things and I just don't want to be that way anymore. It's changed the way of life. That's, I think that's the easiest way I can put it. It's made changes to my life which are much for the better and brought us together as a family. So it has been a very positive experience for all of us really. And if you were wondering, Natalie's pet dog Monty has also lost two inches from his tummy and he's still losing weight.